In this video, I'm going to walk you through how to use the script from my blog uh, to customize the way your SharePoint Classic forms look. So using standard HTML and CSS, you can totally change the way of your SharePoint, uh, the way your SharePoint forms look pretty painlessly. Uh, this script is actually updated from a script I did a few years ago, uh, but I've had a lot of requests for tweaks and changes, so I added a couple of enhancements and made it a little bit easier to use. Uh, so I'm just going to walk you guys through how to do that and how to use it, and then I'll kind of walk you through the script itself so you can understand the changes you need to make to your forms. So the first thing we need to do is actually get the scripts. And so if you go to my GitHub account at github.com slash mrackley, uh, there's also a link to it in the blog post. I have a project called Hillbilly Template. And within this project, there are two main files, hillbillytemplate.js and hillbillytemplatecewp.js. You need to download these files and then upload these two JavaScript files to the site assets document library of your SharePoint site. And this will work on SharePoint 2010, 2013, 2016, Office 365 with Classic Forms. So it works uh, on several different uh, versions of SharePoint. So here in my SharePoint site, we happen to be in Office 365. I'm going to go into my Site Assets Library, and I am just going to upload these two files. So Hillbilly Template and the CEWP file. Just drag and drop those, and we'll get those uploaded. So the scripts that exist at GitHub have an example that works for out-of-the-box tasks list. So you should be able to use this on your task list without making any other changes. So let's go ahead and just implement it as is for a task list. And I'll go through the entire process of creating a task list and everything. So I'm going to go into my site here and I'm going to add a task list. So let's go to add an app. I'm going to add a tasks list. And I'm going to call it Hillbilly Tasks. And let's create that. So if we go into the list we just created and we look at the new item form, you see it is the standard SharePoint new item form. No style to it, it's just kind of plain. Um, but we want to make it look nice with the template from the example. So I'm going to edit my new item form. So I'm going to go to edit page here. And I'm going to add a web part to this page. And I'm going to add a media and content content editor web part. So from here, I'm going to have the content editor link to the script that we uploaded to our document library. And that will change the way the form this look the way this form looks. So let's edit this web part. And over here in the content link, I'm going to point it to site assets hillbilly template template cewp.js and I'm going to apply that so now if I stop editing and now come in, in here to add a new task we see that the form is now in a jQuery UI accordion so it's got a, a big title up here that we added. The fields are in the different accordion, accordions, and, and the fields still work, right? So we can still use the date picker. We can still use the assign to field to look for a person. So all the fields still work. What this script did was just move the fields that were already on the screen to an HTML template so that it's more stylized. Uh, one of the things that are new to this script is you can also move the save and cancel button. So I'll move the save and cancel button to the top of the form instead of the bottom of the form. Uh, and finally, one of the things that we added to this script is the ability to have a generic error message if there is a, a, a form error on submission. So if I click the save button now, it's going to pop up a message saying form errors exist. But if you look at the page, you don't see where that error is. That's because the error is actually on the first accordion. And before this enhancement was made to the script, the form would save and the user wouldn't know that there was an error there. So now I hit save, it says, oh, fix your errors. And if I look at the first accordion, I see, oh, here's the error message. I left the task name blank. So I can come in here and say, put it in the field and save it. And now it will actually save, okay? 
So let's open up the script and uh, look at some of those options and see how some of this works so you can see how you can customize this for your lists and your uh, libraries. So here looking at the CEWP file, this should be the only file that you have to change for your list instance. And what you have to do is create an HTML template for how you want your form to look. And in this example is the HTML for a jQuery UI accordion. And you can see that I've got all these placeholders that are in spans for where I want those fields to go in the template. So here we have the HTML for a task name and then we have this span that has a class of hillbilly form and a data dash display name equal task name. This tells the script to look for a span with a class of hillbilly form and then figure out which field needs to be moved into that span. In this instance the field to move into the, this span is task name. Into this span the field we want to move into that span is the description field. So for everything that you have on your form, you could go to your HTML designer and say, hey designer, you create nice pretty forms. Go create me some HTML for my task list, for my issues list, for my contact us form, and make it look super stylized. But instead of putting a input box for the first name field, I want you to create this span for the first name field. And that span needs a class of hillbilly form and it needs this data dash display name attribute and the value of it should be first name if that is the display name of our field okay the other things we added to this script is if you want to move the save button and the cancel button all you have to do is create a span somewhere in your template with the class of hillbilly form save if the script sees this span it will move the save button there. If it sees a span with the class of hillbilly form cancel, it will move the cancel button there. If you don't put these spans in your template, it will just keep the save and cancel buttons on the bottom of the page. Uh, finally, um, if you want the ability to throw an error because there may be a missing field on some non-visible part of the screen, you can actually specify what you want the text of that error message to be. So when your page loads, you have to execute this hillbilly template method and you can pass a couple parameters to it. Do you want to show a generic alert if there's a form submission error? You, you probably want to set this to false if all of your fields are on one form and nothing's hidden because there's no reason to pop up an additional alert message if they can clearly see where the error message, error message is. But if there's a chance that an error message may be on a field that's not visible to the user, you'd want to set this to true and then pass in some message that you want to appear on the screen to the user. So just to see that we can change a couple of things in here, I'm going to remove these two spans and so that it, now I'm not going to be moving the save and cancel button and then let's go ahead and change where the task name is. I'm going to move the task name to a different part of my form. So let's remove this row for the task name and let's put it at the bottom of the form instead and now I can save this and when I come back into my site assets library so let's upload the updated file and I'm going to replace it and so now when I come to the task list and do a new task you see that the save and cancel buttons are back at the bottom of the form because I didn't move them and the task name is the last name, the last field on that first tab. So again, you can use and change as HTML as you want to. Again, the thing that is just important is that you have a placeholder for every field that you want to have uh, on your form. Now, if for some reason there's a field you don't want to appear on the form at all, just don't put it in the template and it won't show up. Um, so yeah, so that's how you use it. Uh, feel free to play with it. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, thanks again for stopping by. Thank you.